Now, uh, to help us get a little bit more background on the dispensaries issue, here is an old friend, an old member of our team, um, Emily Sapiria, who has been following the uh, cannabis dispensaries issue here in Waltham very closely for uh, several years and has helped me keep up to date on it. But tonight we decided it would be better to just let her tell you about it. Um, and so we could ask her some questions. So welcome, Emily. Hello. Thanks for being here. So before we go to Emily James, can you just give us a summary of what happened at this week's meeting? Sure. So this was another meeting where they had uh, representatives from all of the shops there. And this was a me this was a meeting that wasn't scheduled at a set time. It was set at uh, after the council meeting, which meant that all of the uh, uh, the the uh, dispensary owners and their lawyers were standing around for hours before the meeting even started and then wrapped up at like midnight. <laughs> so that's it was interesting to observe. Uh, most of the back and forth that this particular meeting was about the specifics of like the, the, the individual shops like layout, it changes to their design and like the implications for that. So like one of the dispensaries was that they were talking about getting a feedback from the legal department about whether or not it would need a um, uh, another public hearing, for example, and uh, they then scheduled another meeting on the twenty second, where they're going to have all these people back in again to, go to, to hear more about it. And they also had uh, the lawyer, the city lawyer, in ta talk about the um, uh, the new law that had uh, been passed. So, yeah, that's basically the short of it. Thank you, James. And yeah, so actually about the new law, um, I had mentioned this two weeks ago. I did a correction last week saying it actually hadn't passed yet, but it actually did pass just before this meeting. So Emily, can you catch us up on that? What does the new law do and, and why was that relevant to this meeting? Sure. Yeah. Well, a lot of the meeting last night ended up um, focusing on the meeting and catching up some of the counselors on how that impacts the work they're doing. Um, so the legislation that was passed um, just passed yesterday, very, I think just after midnight on August 1st, um, is an act relative to equity in the cannabis industry. It was passed in um, both House and Senate went to Baker's desk, he's expected to sign it. It's a bit of a compromise in terms of what some of the social equity advocates wanted, but it is expected to be signed by Baker. Um, some of the ways that came up last night and some of the ways it's relevant to the ways that rules and ordinances is doing their work is um, that it caps the um, amount that a host community agreement can collect in terms of um, community impact fees at 3%. Um, so that's something that's been um, on my mind and I've been wondering if it's been on any of the counselors minds. Certainly I, I see it, it's been on our city solicitors minds as um, assistant city solicitor Lockman was, had an opportunity to to clarify indeed um, when it came up, um, I think it was Councilor LeBlanc asked, uh, he had not been at the previous special meeting of rules and ordinances where um, attorneys uh, for the dispensaries and city council worked out that they would um, recoup traffic impact fees. This new law says you actually can't um, specify more than 3%. In addition to that, um, the law specifies that the Cannabis Control Commission will now have more oversight in over the HCAs and in fact, we'll be reviewing um, each community, host community agreement, um, both uh, those in existence and those um, that are in the works. Um, so they'll all get a close look, and that's important because there actually has been um, some criminal investigations um, in terms of corruption, bribes um, in relation to host community agreements. And they really spent a long time, especially catching up counselors that hadn't been at the previous meetings this summer, explaining that, no, um, the, the money that's going to be used for this traffic mitigation cannot come from any sort of separate 
pot, pun intended, other than, um, you know, this 3% community impact fee, which will be designated in the host community agreement. And it, the assistant city solicitor also clarified that the host community agreement cannot be, um, or has not been formalized yet and will not be until the permits are approved. So there's a, a lot of clarification last night, really. Thank you. So about the host community agreements, our understanding was that that was the next stage of the process. Once they get their special permits, they move on to negotiating that with the mayor. But then I remember at a previous meeting, there was a comment that led us to believe that maybe actually one business um, already has a host community agreement. And I'm not sure if we got any more um, information about that last night. What is your understanding of that? It sounds like uh, it sounds like we have made someone who can speak to that, Chris. Uh, yeah, we actually um, James and I chatted with a lawyer for one of the cannabis commissions during the executive session, and we were chatting. And I brought up the fact that we had heard through the grapevine that one of the um, one of the applicants already had a community host agreement, and they said that they had heard that that was just for medicinal. Um, Hmm. A, a medicinal license and they were just as they were in the, the pot as well of uh, people seeking uh, adult Interesting. Interesting. yeah and I think that was Middlesex Integrative Medicine but they're still stalled out because they've gone for adult use as well is it your impression that um the council has been working with the mayor in a way where once they announce who they're giving the special permits to, the mayor will be on board with doing host agreements, or do you think that'll be a completely separate decision-making process um, or that will we'll, uh, will we be sort of starting over with the mayor when it comes to that process? Um, my hot take, just based on what the, the language that counselors used last night is that um, one thing may not have a lot to do with the other, except that the permitting is the first required step. Um, and I, th I think if anything, the new state legislation will, will be the piece that has the most impact the executor on the host community agreements, which in our case is the mayor, will have a closer eye from the Cannabis Control Commission on essentially just getting this done. It, it's now written into this new legislation that Baker's about to sign. Do you think that's what's been motivating the council to get this, to meet over, over the summer about this and move this forward? That I don't know. Um, Councilor Harris has been the one counselor who's really, and more recently, um, started to put a flame under this item. That pun was not intended. Um, but, but whatever my disagreements may be with her decisions, I think she is bright, and I think she realizes that this needs to happen for someone like her who may have other political aspirations. It might behoove her to get something done. Um, so I guess that is some speculation. Does the new legislation put any uh, time limits on like the uh, host community agreements that need to get made or like anything like that? It, it, it does to the extent that but um, specifically in terms of the community impact fees, they can only be co collected over eight years. And so I, th I, I think, and I would need to verify, I think that goes retroactively. So if a dispensary opened, I don't remember, off, you know, if any actually opened in 2016, but if you're going up on eight years, then, you know, you're off the hook and um, you know, we start from day one if if you're a new dispensary. Thank you. Any speculation on what will happen at their next meeting? Um, yes. Based on what was said last night, in particular by Councillor Harris, um, and an exchange with uh, Uma Flowers' attorney, um, it does sound like it is possible that with these minor tweaks, which really focused on 
planting more trees and um, some tweaks to just getting the language exactly right, nitpicky stuff for better or worse, um, uh, that all five of these dispensaries are eligible if they, you know, now do these just final last draft tweaks to their permits um, and have them just everything perfect at this August 23rd meeting that they've scheduled now, August 23rd at 6.30 p.m. We could have four out of those five businesses um, seeking or, you know, coming out with permit approval at the end of that meeting. That's that's not a definite. I think it's a possibility, partially because of the state pressure um, and partially because there's just nothing else to be done at this point. They're quibbling over what species of trees are being planted. The, uh, it is getting less and less defensible to have all these lawyers milling around for hours and hours just for not nothing, no actionable items coming out of meetings. Speaking of uh, lawyers, um, during that conversation James and I had with um, one of them, he was saying, and Emily, I'm curious um, if you think this is true, he was saying that although four out of the five applicants could acquire the special permits, they were saying that not all of them will necessarily get a community host agreement from the mayor. I think, and especially up until the passage of this new, um, this new bill, this new state bill, that has been a real possibility. Um, I think now, especially because this ability focuses on social equity and we do have at least one social equity applicant, I think on paper, there's more than one. I think it would be indefensible for the executor on our host community agreements, who's mayor, to deny a social equity applicant with an absolutely perfect permit with a uh, you know, successful um, business in Pepperell um, to deny them an HCA. Um, I don't know quite as much about the other businesses, but at this point, they have satisfied um, so many requests. It was the uh, dispensary that was going to be on, I think, the Main Street that had the question come up about its uh, uh, layout changes and if it needed to have a uh, uh, another public hearing as a result. <laughs> and that, that got sent to the legal department to ask for a response before the 22nd. So out of... I think it sounds like that's the, probably the least likely to get an approval. Yeah, I cut that briefly. I think between that and um, the Ward 7 Councillor Kate sending a letter um, saying, genuinely, we don't want this in our backyard for reasons unidentified other than the community is healing. It seems that it is the unpopular business. And I think it will not come as a surprise if we get four dispensaries that are as far away from the main drag, so to speak, as possible, or four or fewer. It doesn't seem like a coincidence. The one that there is any concerns about is the one that's on Main Street. Agreed. Emily, while we have you here, can you just speak generally to how you've been feeling about recreational marijuana in Waltham because we worked together on social equity provisions back in 2018. Yeah. Um, and while I pretend to uh, pay attention to these meetings, you've been keeping a very close eye on uh, recreational marijuana, especially. Um, can you just speak very generally about how you're feeling about how Waltham did? Terrible, just like point blank terrible. And, and I won't say in particular recreational or medical. So two prong answer. Number one, having worked on the social equity amendment, which did pass in city council, um, it was given a two year restriction and those two years have expired. So there's no more social equity language or any social equity regulations required in Waltham. So I felt good that it was passed, but time has just marched on and that's out the window. As a patient, I feel terrible because, you know, personal disclosure, I had surgery. You know, you all know this, but the viewers don't necessarily. I had surgery last summer. I, I used cannabis instead of opioids, which I didn't want to use. 
for a whole variety of reasons. It was a pain in the butt to, in recovery um, with minimal mobility to um, obtain what was medicine for me, um, you know, not nearby. Um, and I think that's a common experience. Um, and I think there's a lot to say for what's going on with quote unquote big cannabis and, you know, how it's just really become, <laughs> become another horrible industry, but there's also a lot to say for allowing people access to something that people genuinely use medicinally and people are legally or allowed to use recreationally as well. I'm glad that the state agrees that there needs to be closer eyes on what these municipalities are doing. Definitely. I think Waltham will be remembered as a city that really dragged their feet when it came to this, really dragged their feet. Yeah. Thank you so much, Emily. That was really helpful. You kind of got us caught up on a bunch of confusing issues at once. I appreciate it. And hopefully we'll have you back sometime soon. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you so much for having me, everyone. Great night. Thank you.